This accident was classified immediately, fearing any leakage of information, because the military integrity and honor of the entire Soviet Navy was at stake during the Cold War and the serious confrontation with the United States. In addition, the enterprise where it happened was a secret, and any information automatically fell under the disclosure of state secrets of the USSR. 52 years ago on January 18, 1970 during the construction of the nuclear submarine K-320 of Project 670 SCAT at the Krasnoy Sormovo shipyard in the town of Gorky, present-day Nizhny Novgorod, a grave radiation accident occurred in the nuclear reactor. On the submarine K-320, when it was on the slipway, due to personnel negligence and design and engineering flaws, an unauthorized reactor startup occurred, which operated at prohibitive power for about 15 seconds. Only 15 seconds were enough time for the catastrophe to happen. The accident occurred during hydrotesting of the reactor and the circuit through which the coolant, the water that cools the fuel assemblies, circulates. Special drives and electric motors inside which the screw is located on the reactor lid, and these screws are connected in the reactor with reactivity compensation organs with compensating grids were not installed. Special temporary technological plugs were installed in their place. Typical negligence and carelessness of the workers. During hydrotesting, there was enormous pressure in the reactor and the plugs ripped out of their places, unable to withstand the pressure. The water in the reactor rushed into those holes, but together with the water the reactivity compensation organs compensating grids began to rise. As a result of the lifting of the compensation organs, the reactor reached full power. What happened was a classical nuclear accident. There was considerable radioactive contamination of the entire area of the workshop where the atomic ship was being built. Exactly 25 years before 1995 this tragedy remained a state secret, not subject to disclosure. Therefore, all work and the accident were immediately classified, fearing any leakage of information. A radiation accident is a violation of the rules of safe operation of a nuclear power plant, equipment or device, when radioactive decay products or ionizing radiation escaped beyond the limits of their safe operation as stipulated by the design resulting in irradiation of the population and contamination of the environment. On January 18, 1970, there was a radiation accident in Nizhny Novgorod. At the time of the radiation accident, 150 to 200 workers were directly on the premises. Twelve installers died immediately, the rest were exposed to a serious radioactive release. Serious and widespread radioactive contamination of the area was avoided because the shop was closed. The docks and all areas where this kind of technical work was carried out were under certain protection, according to strict safety regulations. But contamination was still unavoidable and there was considerable discharge of radioactive water into the Volga River. The level of radiation in the shop reached 60,000 X-rays. These are huge numbers. Many people went home that day without receiving the necessary decontamination treatment and medical care. In the 70s of the last century there were no serious rules developed for rendering first medical aid to the victims of radioactive contamination, and the medicine was not properly prepared for work with such patients. Only after the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in 1986 the country will have a set of effective measures to deal with the victims of radiation contamination. It was 1970 and medicine had unreliable and scarce information about radiation. Six of the seriously injured were taken by a separate military flight to a hospital in Moscow, three of whom died a week later with a diagnosis of acute radiation sickness while the rest had to sign an oath of confidentiality about what had happened. A special commission was working on this case. But no time was wasted. It was not until the next day that the workers were washed with special solutions. But it was impossible to keep the incident from the workers. On the same day, 450 people learned about the accident and resigned from the plant. The main accident elimination work 
decontamination and cleaning up operations continued until April 24, 1970. More than a thousand people took part in the cleanup operations. Mainly military conscripts from the chemical troops of the Soviet Army, as they were then called chemists worked on the decontamination. Young guys received colossal doses of radiation at this facility. Later these troops would be renamed the Russian Chemical Defense Forces. For these events the Krasnoy Sormovo plant was awarded the Order of the October Revolution, and its director M. Yuryev received the Hero of Socialist Labor. None of the rank-and-file workers received government awards for their participation in liquidation of the accident consequences. The liquidators of this radiation disaster could not qualify for any benefits for a long time. Officially, Krasnoy Sormovo did not manufacture submarines and all information about the plant was classified. The accident of January 18, 1970 was declassified only in the mid-1990s, when there were no witnesses and participants left. One of the surviving workers of the plant later recalled his conversation with academician Alexandrov, the creator of the reactor. With what devices and mechanisms did you carry out decontamination? There were these mechanisms, a bucket, a mop and a rag, which we used to wash the submarine walls, slipways, floors and the workshop walls. The dosimetrists would check after us. If it doesn't sound, it's good, but if it does wash it all over again. And where did all the washed-off radioactive dirt go? You know where, in the Volga, it took everything. And how many of your first volunteer team remained alive? As the famous song says, there were only three of us out of 18 guys left. Yes, only three survived. No one at the time gave any thought to the degree and scale of radiation contamination in the assembly shop itself. After all, the huge assembly shop was divided by a thin partition into two main sections. In one of them there were two submarines on the slipway. They were decontaminated after the nuclear clap and the surrounding area of the workshop. In the other part of the welding shop, behind a partition, the third submarine of the renewed Project 671 was being assembled. This was the main assembly shop. Up to a thousand and a half people worked in this assembly shop all the time. Day after day, they worked in shifts, because the country needed a new nuclear submarine of the new generation to be built as soon as possible. It was somehow taken for granted that the thin brick partitioning would protect the shipbuilders from radiation penetration. But the two assembly halls were under one roof and the whole building was contaminated with radiation and the two halves of the shop were connected by a huge gate, as well as a common ventilation and water supply. But nevertheless, cleaning and decontamination was done only in shop number one, where the accident occurred directly. And the second workshop, where the new boat was being assembled, was not decontaminated and cleaned. And people continued to work after the accident, exposing themselves to huge doses of radiation. A sad epiphany came as people began to pass away from radiation sickness. The accident was fully declassified in the 1990s, when all the participants of the events had already passed away. But no one has ever given a full and comprehensive assessment of the actions of the competent authorities and the military that carried out the decontamination. A number of significant catastrophic mistakes were made in assessing the scale of the contamination and the method of decontamination, which resulted in harm to the life and health of a huge number of people. Why was this accident not dealt with after years of publicity, when the stamp of top secret was lifted and the subject should have been raised for public discussion, evaluation and disclosure? The answer is very obvious and simple. There are no living witnesses and no victims, i.e. the accident itself. Catastrophes of such level have occurred in many countries of the world, but during the Cold War and the confrontation between the Soviet Union and the USA, there could be no question about any kind of radiation safety of people, because the future of the entire world was at stake. If you are interested, do not be lazy give me a thumbs up.
And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more interesting videos on my channel. Hit bell to notify me and share this video with your friends. What else interesting things can you add to this video? Write in the comments, it will be interesting to read.